I hope everyone is fine. This is Sir Manas. I know you know me. Welcome to my class. Watch all my videos and practice the same. Let's begin today's class. Congrats, dear students. I really appreciate your hard work. You all are doing very good job. Like this, you watch and do the homework. is good for you those who have not done don't worry watch my previous video and send me so that in my next video i will upload your name be happy and let's enjoy today's class today we will discuss booting in ms dos and types of booting so let's start booting in ms dos The process of turning on the computer and loading of an operating system in the RAM is known as booting. It means simply to start the computer is known as booting. So there are two types of booting. One is cold booting, another one is warm booting. Uh, in case of DOS, it involves the in loading of three essential files that is io.sys, ms.sys, and command.com into the main. memory that is ram so booting is the process of turning on the computer and loading of an os into the ram clear during booting of a computer the following actions automatically takes place in the computer memory we'll discuss one by one so number one is post full form is power on self test is activated which starts checking all the components and peripherals peripheral means i told you the devices which are attached to the computer if any component is not responding or found to be faulty an error message is displayed on the screen yes or no if there is a, uh, the keyboard cable connection is not connected properly then error message will display that is the function of operating system understand now the next point the execution of rom bios the full form is read only memory basic input output system which automatically takes place initially it starts the c drive and if it is found then dos is loaded from the c drive so c drive is very important that's why whenever you will store any data you have to back up it either you store d or e uh, or any other uh, backup drives so once dos is found in the system the very first sector is executed it contains a small set of programs which includes booting up instructions uh, that are executed in the following ways so at first two system files io.sys and ms.sys are loaded into the main memory then the loading of config.sys takes place through which the user can configure the computer system then the command interpreter of dos command.com is loaded which is responsible for the execution of all types of dos command at last the system looks for a batch file if it is found then it is executed with the help of auto exec.bat file so when you will switch on the computer these files first will load into the main memory that is in the ram these are the system files clear after loading all the five files that is io.sys ms.sys command.com config.sys and auto exec.bat the system displays the default drive if it is loaded from the c drive then the system will display c prompt that is c colon slash and the greater than symbol if the, the user wants to go to d drive then you can do the following way c prompt then type d prompt so this is break time i do this activity i am coming within one minutes okay
let's begin the class okay now watch how booting takes place it's important to understand the boot process because it provides several key pieces of forensic information and allows you, as a forensic examiner, to control the boot process to use forensic booting tools. Let's take a look at what happens when you boot a computer. When you turn on your computer, the power supply sends power to the motherboard, which in turn activates the boot process. Power on self-test post instructions are stored in a ROM, a read-only memory chip, as part of the BIOS or the basic input-output system. The post runs through a series of tests to make sure everything is working. Most post sequences will have a combination of audible and visual messages to let you know what is and isn't working. These are the beeps that you generally hear when your computer is booting up. The post checks your video card. At that point, you will see information from the post on the screen. The post then checks to make sure it can find a CPU and that it's communicating. Then it tests your RAM. This is a very basic check of whether it can communicate with your RAM. Now it checks for keyboard and mouse. Depending upon the type of keyboard you have, you might see the keyboard's lights flash. At this point, you would normally see an indication on the screen of how you can enter the BIOS setup program on your computer. Each BIOS software vendor will have a different keystroke, but it is often either F2, F10, or the delete key. This vendor's key is F2, and we will enter BIOS setup. This is where important forensic information is stored, including date and time information, and the booting order. Your computer can be set to boot from your hard drive first, or from your CD, or a USB drive, or even from the network. If you want to boot the computer with a forensic boot CD or a forensic USB device, you may need to change the boot order. Lights on each drive will flash as the post checks them for booting instructions. Most computers are set up to check the optical drive first. This makes it easier to install new operating systems. Then they check the very first hard drive, drive zero. Post is looking for the master boot record. The master boot record is always at cylinder 0, head 0, and sector 1. It points to the boot sector. Finally, post is done, and the operating system takes over. Okay, now as I told you, there are two types of booting, that is cold and warm. So we'll discuss cold booting. When power to a computer is cycled, that is turn off and on, or a special reset signal is given to the processor is known as cold booting. It starts the computer without performing any shutdown procedure. During this process, it activates its ROM and then checks the RAM parts. It also performs a test on the peripherals to ensure that they are working properly. If anything goes wrong, then it displays an appropriate message. So these things just now we saw in the previous uh, animated video understand so how it takes place now we'll discuss warm booting sometimes the computer stops working or doesn't respond to the commands given by the users in such case the computer needs to restart under software control without switching off power this is known as warm booting this can be done either by using the Restart button or by pressing together the control or delete keys combination. It allows quicker reboot and a more convenient restart than powering down the computer completely. In warm booting, it ignores the routine checkup of the peripherals and restores the program files which are present in the RAM. So these are the key combination for warm booting. Now we'll discuss about MS-DOS files. So MS-DOS is a collection of programs stored in files. Program means a sequence of instructions given to a computer to get a task completed. So MS-DOS consists of three main files, IO.sys, MS.sys and command.com, which we had discussed earlier. Okay. Now this IO.sys and MS.sys are hidden system files. And we cannot see these files on the directory list. 
or directory means folder so in cui that is directory and in gui folder now io.sys file handles the input output operation of the system that's why it is input output io means input output and dots in system ms dots dots is takes care of software operation command.com file is visible in the directory list so io.sys handles input output whereas ms.sys take care of software operation okay now do the homework these five questions for you and reply to me